dedicated towards education, social impact, and promotion. Focused on building businesses, communities, relationships, and lives that allow us to create and share our dreams. When we are able to approach life with a desire to allow the best in ourselves and all those around us, abundance of health, wealth, and love will naturally flow. Speak Up and Empower provides community members with the tools that they need to create and share their dreams. Authors of all forms, blogs, articles, magazines, books, copyright, bloggers and publishers, and course providers. Retailers, speakers, whatever way you connect with the world, we provide you with the tools that you need to be seen and heard. We will guide you, educate you, and support you, and empower you to realize the passion and turn your dreams into reality. And hello, everybody. It's so wonderful to see all of you here again today. I'm Natalie Coleman, and this is Steps to Serenity here at Speak Up and Empower. So this week, we have got a wonderful regular guest, a great friend of the show, and someone who's become a great friend personally. And um, I'm talking about none other than Steve Weber, who is a broadcaster and uh, the host of the morning show, the, the American Gumption morning show, which airs just about every day over on Spirituality Gone Wild. And the details of his show we'll give to you as we, um, as we go through the show today and during our conversation. Now, what is so special about bringing Steve onto the show today is that he has reached a milestone in the past year of his journey of broadcasting. And that is on Friday last week was his 200th show. So what we're going to do today is have a bit of a reflection on some highlights and the journey in itself and um, and just the talk about the amazing guests that he's had on his show. So I could sit here and talk all day about American Gumption and, uh, and our friend Steve, but that would be absolutely no good. So I'm going to bring him in from the green room. And here is our friend, Steve. <laughs> Hi, Natalie. Awesome to see you again, Steve. Welcome, and thank you for coming back. Yeah, you're, you're very welcome. It's, uh, it's, it's both an honor and pleasure to be here and to share, um, share what we do. I mean, yes, we're we're just we on do. a journey together. So. Oh, you know what? That we are. That we absolutely are. And we're going to talk about the past year of your journey. I know that it's had its... It's probably been a bit of a roller coaster for you, um, in 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 a, in a lot of ways. Um, but before we start talking about that, I'm actually going to read something. Okay. Because this to our guests who might be joining us for the first time, this describes exactly what it is very briefly. What you do. So Steve Weber interviews guests. He shares stories of gumption and uses the life lessons from the movie Forrest Gump to create connectedness and love. All of his guests are ordinary people living extraordinary lives. I love that, the power of the people. And you're a great advocate of the human spirit. Now, before we go any further, talk to us about gumption. Yeah, so so gumption, the way I define gumption is uh, personal responsibility for your thoughts, the way you think, for your actions, the things that you do, and your interactions with others. And so if, uh, if you function with gumption, that means you're taking 100% personal responsibility for, for all of your thinking, your mindset, all of the, the things that you do, the actions, and, and most maybe most importantly, or equally importantly, the interactions with others. And so what happens is uh, blame and anger and frustration, 
kind of all go out the window because you, you're, you know, if you're taking responsibility, then you can't put it on the other person and usually blame and frustration and anger are directed uh, somewhere else when it's really ourselves that we need to look towards to, to take care of those things. So, so gumption is just being responsible for yourself, your mindset, you know, it's, yeah. it's living a conscious life. Yeah. Now, Steve, something like that is, is beautiful. Um, and, you know, it, it touches, so, you know, so, so many parts of, of, of the way I feel and believe. Now, to have got to the point where you have your own definition of gumption and um, I know that you're living with it and you promote it, just very briefly, how did you get to the point where gumption and this definition of it has driven you to what you do now? Well, so I was, uh, I was Forrest Gump for the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. And so I sat on the bench and I entertained people for, uh, what, 15 years. And as that was winding down the last couple of years, I, I began uh, thinking, what do I do next? And so I thought, well, the people love the movie and there's, it's an inspirational story and there's lots of good lessons from it. And so I, I felt like I could develop a... Uh, message kind of, you know, around the themes from the movie. Uh, and I chose gumption just because it was, you know, part of the gump thing. Um, yeah. and, and and then I, I remember there was a uh, coach that I hired who was going to uh, recommend or, or help me develop my message. And I said, I wanted to speak about personal responsibility. And she said, nobody, no organizations will pay you to talk about personal responsibility. They'll only pay you to talk about sales or marketing or, uh, you know, diversity or whatever, you know, like there was like a category of things. So, you know, so you can't talk about one of the soft skills uh, like, you know, human and, you know, emotional intelligence. Now, don't forget, this is 2007, 2008 timeframe. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. Um, you know, things have certainly evolved a lot since then. But I said, well, I, I want to talk about personal responsibility. So I'm, and so I said, well, I'll just redefine gumption to be personal responsibility. And gumption kind of is its own, uh, you know, it, it's its own thing is initiative or courage or common yeah. sense. Yeah. That's, if you look up in the dictionary, gumption, initiative, courage, common sense, it's about getting things done. And I just thought that, um, you know, why not tweak the definition a little bit? So that was how we came up with gumption, meaning personal responsibility. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. So it would seem that you were a little bit ahead of your time back um, back in, you say, 2006, Seven, eight. eight, round about there. Because um, I think as as society has developed, there, there has become, uh, we have become a little bit more spiritual in if that's the right word, and I think it is, in our yeah, a little bit more spiritual in our yeah, in in our approach to life, and um, and it's awesome that you know, and I, knowing you, I believe that you took your own personal experiences and your own personal growth and connections with the universe, with your higher self, to um, in, you know, impress upon that as an important side of the success of the human and the and 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 the, the the human journey really and to put that into business context yeah i think it should be very very high up on the agenda <laughs> seriously yeah. emotional intelligence should be way up there with uh, with the sales and uh, and the bottom line shall we say so I ran into one problem when I was uh, starting out on this journey, uh, and that was that I wasn't living my own life that way. Uh, as I started unpacking what I thought gumption should be and what it should represent for every individual to do and to live their life by, I actually had to look in the mirror and I had to see that I wasn't actually living my life that way uh, 100%. And mm -hmm. so... Uh, have you ever had that moment where you go, oh my gosh, I need to change myself rather than tell everybody else the change. Yeah. And uh, so that was a bit of a rude awakening. And, um, you know, and it took a couple of years because, because what I had to do then, Natalie, was open up all of my uh, foundational beliefs 
and like kind of look at them and decide, well, what do I really believe and how do I want to live my life? And so, you know, we're kind of living on autopilot. We, you know, we, we get born, we get taught, we get trained, we grow up with things, we have fears and, you know, they become secrets and we have these yeah. things that run in our background, in our, our subconscious that produce the same things in our life over and over. Some of the things are good. Some mm -hmm. of the things are kind of repeating problems or patterns that, um, you know, that we keep stumbling and falling into the same traps of life and not really changing anything. And so I uh, opened up that can of worms, I like to say, and it took a couple of years to, to, yeah. to you know, go through that process. And so I feel very fortunate that like a full decade later, uh, I, I can look back and laugh on it, but there was not, uh, you know, the, the journey, the journey of um, developing a message is, is that you have to actually decide to, you know, live it yourself as opposed to just talk about it. Absolutely. And, and making that decision yeah. is where it is, where it all starts. Yeah. Cause you use that word decide and, um, it's such an important word, making the decision to make a change. It's it's quite profound, but but and and you know, I find myself in a position in my life, you know my story, where I had to decide. Yeah. It's one way or the other. Yeah. Um, but then but then, you know, once that decision is made to make the changes and keep liking the person that we see in the mirror, can't be done on on our own. And um, and it's all about our network. It's about family. It's about friend. It's about like-minded people that we can keep on um, collaborating with to constantly bring out that you know that positive side of us and lift us up when we feel, because the the days and the weeks are there when you know, we kind of find ourselves a bit face planted. <laughs> Yeah. And, and it takes, um, you can only kind of go in levels or layers, you know, you have to, you have to make certain choices and deal with certain things first, I guess I would say. And then, or let, let me say it this way. We, we end up going on the journey of, 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 we'll call it a spiritual development or yeah. awakening. And we, we, you know, we, go down one level and then it's not until we get down to that next deeper level that we're able to go to a deeper level after that and then another deeper level after that. So this process has taken, um, you know, you, you know, it, at this point I realize it's, 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 it's for the rest ending. of my life, yeah. right? I'll be dealing with it. And you kind of end up dealing with the same problems. Um, but they're like, you know, disguised a little bit differently, but they kind of always go back to the same basic core issues, but you go, like I said, to a deeper level. The nice thing is that, is that you can, uh, it, like the, the decisions, they don't have to be hidden for, you know, 20, 30 years before you wake up to them. You know, now they just sort of like, once you see what's going on, you can kind of recognize them quicker and then you can make adjustments. And so yeah. it's easier to make the job. It's easier to see them. And then it's easier to make the adjustments as you go along, but it still yeah. is a process. Uh, Absolutely. And you know, the last time that we chatted, which was just over a month ago, you, you kindly came and joined us on the show. Um, there are some times where we need to do a bit of resetting, a bit of recalibrating, mm. a little bit of um, getting out of a level of stuckness, shall we say? That's not a word I know, but it, but it is it is it is something that I think a lot of us find ourselves in in the place of being a bit stuck. And and like you say, it's those old behaviours that get us back there, and. Um, and having a few tools and a few more insights and experience and an open mind to listen to other people's advice, if we choose to, just helps us to, you know, to um, to get out of that stuck place yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and move to and move to the next level. Um, I, I like what you said about uh, listening to other people. And probably that's been an area that I've 
I've, I've um, had, had, a, had an opportunity to, to grow. It's not that I don't listen to other people. Like, like I've been a good student generally, I mean, and open-minded, but whenever you are committed to doing something, you kind of are like, well, you know, you don't want to get feedback on it because, um, you know, we have the ego that doesn't want to get damaged. And, yeah. and, and so, um, so I noticed myself even like the last week or so, um, the last few weeks, uh, I've been, you know, really having to uh, listen hard because I want to take the show kind of to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, and, and so anyway, I've been getting feedback from people who um, have different experiences and the first instinct sometimes is to defend and to justify, well, and, and fortunately I'm able to, you know, quiet myself and not say anything and then like kind of think about it. Um, but it's still like, there's that like moment where you're fighting that in your head, like where you want to say something, even though you don't, but you're, it's, it's almost as bad as, um, you know, like arguing with the person because you're arguing with yourself about, Oh, they, they don't, they don't, um, they don't understand, or they don't have the full story. And that's true. They don't mm -hmm. have the full story, but, all I need to do is just take it in and just mm -hmm. consider, is this true? Is this something that would be helpful to me? Mm -hmm. Because they're trying to help me, right? They're, and they're just throwing out ideas. They're not, they don't know whether it's, a, so they're just throwing out all kinds of ideas. So anyway, yeah. it's all good. Yeah, yeah. That listening, I mean, I find myself in a position at the moment where, um, you know, my ears need to mm. be doing the work more than, the mouth because mm -hmm. <laughs> we do have two of those in one of these and and i think you know it's just we can't you know the day i wake up and think that i've got less to learn than i did yesterday well i may as well just go back to bed because there's just so much to learn every single day and um and like you talk about yourself being a student of life mm. what a beautiful vocation i agree with you let yeah. us never stop learning and speaking of that never stopping learning, I'll tell you what, I was going through your catalog, through the library of your 200 shows. And wow, the variety and well, scope of guests that you've had and the amazing information that they have been so generous to share with you and your audience has been absolutely amazing and yeah I mean no. <laughs> it's just so easy to jump in there but but no but but really you know from from and we'll, we'll and what I want you to do just in a little bit is to pull out a few of the highlights but you know your your range of of guests from like um you know, you've got a longevitarian. Now, I'd never heard of a longevitarian in in, um, in Scott Stanfield. Then you've got um, you've got your spiritual leaders who've come onto your show, and 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 as the as the sort of the year has gone by, you've had a growing focus on that spiritual. Uh, that spiritual element, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, and I do stand to be corrected, you've got health experts. Um, you know, such a range, and 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 I said in my introduction uh, on the invite to the event, this is a must-have for everybody's daily dose of like variety of inspiration. So I'm going to shush now. <laughs> mm and let you reflect on those amazing guests that you've had over the past year. Yeah, thank you. Um, people have been very kind and generous, uh, you included. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and we, what, what I've, um, it, it has, it, I started out with the idea that I wanted it to be a variety show. And so, um, that was sort of my motivation. I, I did definitely take, um, uh, a turn towards the uh, teaching and the the idea that people who spoke about enhancing one's ability to live life 
so that they can become better students of life or they can become better appreciators of the life experience. So people who elevate the human experience for mm -hmm. all of us, that's what I, um, that's probably the common denominator. Those are the conversations I wanna have. Uh, and some people have just been kind of a one-time guest who who came in and shared their 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 idea, and it was it was great, and it was fun for me. Uh, and then others came, and I was like, I, I need to bring you back because I want to talk about this particular subject. Or and 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 so that's what you and I did uh, those first you know let's say five months or so of the show, mm. where you came and you you were a regular every couple of weeks or at least once a month. You were yeah. visiting the story, and we and we you know we started out telling your story of of your uh, your own recovery. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, then we we went deep into different topic areas. And that's what mm -hmm. I really enjoyed. And I didn't expect that to happen uh, so much. And now I feel like I'm like I'm kind of um, interviewing like, a, like when I'm interviewing a person, I'm always like thinking, well, could this person be a good guest for like, you know, four or five shows where we yeah. can go on several <laughs> several topics. So so it's it's grown. But but I I, I like I like the variety. I like getting to know people. I love the aha moments. I love the moments when people like kind of awaken and go, oh my gosh, I've got a, like a decision that they make that kind of changes everything. I just love, uh, you know, the idea that we have that ability to almost instantaneously, you know, shift gears or directions and, and everybody does it, but they don't re recognize it. So I try to pull out those kinds of moments when, when, you know, like in your own story, when, uh, you know, when you, when you said, um, you know, when you were, you know, you've had many moments, but like the moment when you, you know, first were in the treatment center for, you know, X number of, you know, weeks, and then you got out and, you know, a week or two later, you're right back in again. I mean, yeah. that like a, that was that moment that finally, you know, yeah. unraveled the, you know, began the, 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 the full healing process and changing yeah. of, of things. So, so, what happens in the mind that and and in the spirit not in the mind let's say in the spirit yeah. of a person when they finally go okay i can't go on living life uh this way i've got to make a change i've got to go in a different direction that's a powerful moment and and so if we can find those and some people are more uh willing to to talk and, and have gone through it so they have those moments and others are you know just sort of you know you got to try to coax them out of it a little bit mm -hmm. i i feel like i my job is to uh to try to you know help people feel comfortable enough that they're willing to to share those moments and and you know let it be an experience of growth all over again for them and for the audience members yeah yeah and you do you listen so intently and you make people feel so relax that they um that they enjoy sharing their stories and you talk about stories where you know life-changing stories i mean you've had um the one that I, I looked at was um peter panagall you know people who've had you know not one but let's say two near-death experiences and and you know you're able to draw the life um the 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 life lessons and the, the the value out of you know those experiences that I, I mean I'll just keep on saying it people really need to visit you know all the shows are on your website I mean on your Facebook page they're all there um you know to go and listen to some real real gems and nuggets of wisdom um yeah there thank you yeah, it's been fun. Uh, and when Peter um, joined joined me and talked about it, uh, you know, he had written the book, yeah. uh, uh, Heaven is Beautiful. And But I read the book and I related to the book. And so um, one of the things that's, uh, I've read more books this last year than yeah. I, you know, because you, you know, you want to honor the person coming on with, with it. Yeah. And, yeah. and the truth is some people's books are, um, I don't get through them. Um, you know, I, I read, you know, some of it and then I, I run out of time or, you know, I, for whatever reason, I don't read the full thing and others, I go through it. Peter's book. I just read the whole, whole thing in one sitting and, um, you know, it was, um, you know, it was very powerful. So, so the ability to have the conversation where I know certain details, yeah. um, yeah. is important. So there's a, there's a fair amount of, um, 
you, you know, there's a fair amount of uh, like research that's necessary yeah. to have a good interview. And I love doing that. I love, I love finding out who the people are and, you know, going to their Facebook page, going to their LinkedIn profile. They all say some, they all say the same and yet they all say it a little bit differently. And so you can yeah. kind of, you can kind of, you know, so it's been kind of fun. And then once you interview the person, like I said, some of them are just sort of, you, you talk one time and others you want to bring back and have other conversations. Peter and I haven't talked about coming back, but I saw his Sunday show mm -hmm. uh, he, he, you know, and, and the man's fascinating. I mean, so we have a lot more to talk about. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. So yeah. it's, it's been, it's been fun. I don't know if I answered your question about the, the guest and the variety of guests, but yeah. um, you know, it's been, like some people are a little more just like kind of like the show. I, I imagine it being more entertaining uh, than, than like really like, I, I think it's still learning, but like, like I've had a couple of people who I've, they, they've sent me pictures like of their art or of photographs of like their photographers. And that's, those are fun for me because, you know, you can see the pictures and then they talk about them and you talk about it and it's not quite as, you know, it's not quite as uh, intense of a topic as like a near death experience, but yeah. you know, people can still learn from it because everybody can relate to taking a picture. Well, that's it. And that's, and that's what I say, it's in the variety. I mean, you talk to, I didn't even know it was a word, but it is um, qualified Christologists and energy practitioners. You know, mm. you've got um, Mickey Roscoe that I believe is, is quite a regular. She's from over here in the UK, isn't she? Yeah, and yeah. and and you and Nikki were like uh, uh, neck and neck as far as the that you know being the guest, <laughs> the most time guest on the show. Uh, uh, so, um, but but it's been fun, and yeah. and I I decided as I've gone along that I really do enjoy um, you know having follow-up conversations, yes. having regular conversations, but for an, in order for that person to be, you know, they have to bring something, you know, new to the, the you know, the conversation each time where, mm. you know, you, you can cover certain material, but you can't have the same conversation over and over again. That's it. That's it. And, and it's like you say, you know, so you, you know, um, you go, for, you know, you go for a deep dive into the next topic. I, I love that word. You always use that really go deep dive into topic X, Y or Z. And then the next week, A, B and C, which is which is amazing. Now, another way that you um, that you bring a bit of variety to your show, not every um, day do you have a guest, but you find inspiration in doing, I find, amazing monologues. So talk to us about the monologues and where you get your inspiration from. Yeah, so I I originally for I don't, I don't know why, but when I designed the show almost a year ago, uh it began on August 3rd, uh so I I kind of mapped out what I wanted to do like in the week or so ahead of time and I said I'm going to do a you know, like you, you start the show and you do a little introduction and you, you know, you say hello and you tell people what's maybe coming up in future shows. And then you, um, I do a monologue and then I bring the guest on. So anyway, the first, um, about two months I did these monologues and I used all of what I'm going to call safe topics. And they were gumption and the life lessons from the movie yeah. and all of the things that I had been writing and talking about the, the previous 10 years. Uh, and so as I went through those, it was great, but I, I also knew there was a whole bunch of curiosity about like other things that I had done research on, but they weren't part of gumption per se. And they weren't part of my <laughs> keynote presentation that when someone would hire me to be a speaker at, at their meeting, uh, you, you know, so I, I, I suddenly one day when I'm going to talk about, and I don't even remember, I have to go back and look and find out what I was. I talked about some topic that was uh, connected with the guest. And I just instantly like went, oh my gosh, that's, that's yeah. what I have to do. Uh, and I almost do that every day now. I mean, every yeah. show um, I'll relate it. So, uh, and what's the beauty of that is that I'm expanding my ability to understand and communicate on a different topic that 
that I, you know, that we all have ideas and we all have different, and we know, we know lots of things. And, you know, so we know, everybody knows a little bit about everything, but do we know enough to actually have a little bit of a, of a conversation about it? So the monologues have given me an opportunity to practice and to get better at talking about some of these different things and, and develop an understanding about them. And, and when you're going to present, you know, you want to, you know, you can't just, you know, do double talk because it'll confuse people. So I try to uh, explain it in a way that makes sense. So anyway, so it's Absolutely. fun for me. The monologue. Yeah. Fun. Well, you know, and that's and that's the journey, and that's you know, um, the sort of the the the, the growth and tra almost transformation of the show. You know, the development of it, shall we say? How you know you what worked once was all you know, was good. And then just embracing what could, um, what could work even better. And we've got a bit of a fan of the show here. Mm. Um, <laughs> you came out of your shell and you're a pearl of a man. Oh, thank you. And then he's also said, um, the honesty by the pair of you is really wonderful. You two are awesome. Um, so thank you so much. So that's uh, that's one, Mr. Coleman. <laughs> he's yeah. a he's a he's a big fan of uh, of the show. Um, so <clears throat> that's yeah. So we were just talking about you know the evolving um, of uh, of the show, and um, who, if for whoever hasn't watched it, just the quirkiness of the intro videos and the music, the the. Um, it's a it's American bandstand kind of music. Forgive me if I'm not using the right term, but they all the 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 tunes that you use mean something, don't they? Yeah, in so, terms of what they are. So American Gumption. Um, when I originally came up with the idea, so I had been working under the Speaking Gump, and that website's still alive and well, SpeakingGump.com, um, and that's really about you know what I had developed with the life lessons from the movie and, and the gumption principles and being a speaker going out. I decided though, that I, that that wasn't my higher calling. That was, that was mm -hmm. like a fun thing. And it was mm -hmm. great. Like, you know, part of this journey that I I'm on, but American gumption became this idea that I'm going to go travel around the U S and I'm going to find uh, people to interview and I'm going to find happy stories because I, was look I was listening to the media like a news story one day and it was just like all gloom and doom and and you know it was just not happy and and it was fear based I now understand that it's fear based and I went where's the good stories and so I thought I'm going to travel around and find them and and I don't know whether there's a market but I have to believe that like I'm, I'm anxious for it. So I thought there has to be other people like me who are interested in having happy stories. And, uh, and so anyway, that's how American gumption was, was, you know, born two years ago. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really do anything with it for the first year other than like prepare myself to be able to, to go out there. And then of course, COVID hit and that kind of uh, slowed up the journey, but that actually turned out to be a good thing because it, it forced me or it inspired me to just begin the show virtually and get it going, um, you know, from, you know, this studio, this place that I'm at and, and the place I've been hunkered down through this time when we're not able to travel. Now I'm getting ready to go back out there. And, 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 and but so anyway, it's been great practice and it's just been good to interview people because the skills yeah. that you learn interviewing people, you know, they're, mm. they, they needed to, they needed to develop. And um, one of the things, if I can go back to the gump days, just for yeah, a please. second, you know, I sat on the bench and I just talked to people. Now I was, the, the, the conversations were simple and they were, um, I wasn't like able to break character uh, to a large degree, right? I had to, you know, I was in public performing um, you know, representing the Bubba Gump restaurant. So I was, you know, I was doing what I had to do. And, uh, but what I found is that people love to tell their story and people wanted to have a safe place. And Forrest Gump was a very safe, um, 
person uh, to, to, to share the story with. And so I thought maybe we can, you know, use a, like maybe we can take, you know, the Steve part of it and the forest part of it and and marry them together and have more meaningful conversations. But people still do uh, respond. And if you just listen, right, if you just mm -hmm. use these things, mm -hmm. if you just listen to people and really listen to them, then mm -hmm. people are very generous and open up and share. Well, I can tell you this now. Okay, so let's go back to the RV. I, I, it is just like the coolest concept and vision that you've got. So you've had a year of amazing growth and you've made such incredible connections. Your network is, is absolutely stunning. And I think things happen for a reason. Yes, you weren't in your RV, you know, in, in, the gump mobile, the, the uh, whatever we're gonna, whatever you call it, <laughs> going around the U.S. But things happen for a reason, and I think that you are probably more prepared now than you than you'd ever be. And I know that you were talking on your show today, like the practical things, like the tech, you know, the technology and and that kind of thing that you need to get together to be able to um, to head out, but. I, you know, what a beautiful way to capture people's real stories than, 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 you know, traveling around and, and going to people's hometowns, home space where they feel safe and to be able to truly share their news, their experiences because they grounded in it and and that is you know that that that's the essence of their being um wow so and I, i'm not going to hold you to any dates or anything like that but just are we still is the rv still going to be making its way out at some stage in the near future and are we going to follow you around the u.s yeah i think i think i, I certainly think it will I, i'm aiming at the uh, you know maybe the uh end of the third quarter early fourth quarter uh some somewhere that certainly before the end of the year so we'll yeah. see how that goes um and there's a couple things that have to happen uh for that to um you know you know come about um so one of the it's funny i'm i'm kind of make a little bit of an analogy when i started the speaking business uh back in you know 2007 and 8 kind of started it but then in earnest like 2010 2011 that was like when i went oh my gosh i don't have my i don't have my message fully evolved mm -hmm. and i don't have the work done on myself to actually, you know, go out there and do it. And, and so uh, that ultimately, you know, kind of slowed me down a little bit. Um, and, and with the RV, um, I, I, I haven't figured out a way to fully fund this thing and make mm -hmm. it work. So mm -hmm. I have several ideas and I, and they're all kind of working. And, and there's so, there's actually three or four different options that I'm pursuing that really only one of them uh, has to happen to allow it to. And I don't know whether it will be option A, B, C, or D that kind of, you know, takes off first. So, um, and, I, and I suspect that it'll be a combination of a couple of them. Uh, so, so, but that's, as I, as I look at it where I sit right now, that becomes kind of one of the most important things. Yeah. Over this last year, one of the most important things was just the practice and to, you know, interview yeah. people and to build my, you know, build my skills and build my network and to, you know, get some momentum and energy going as far as how I wanted, you know, it to be. And now that part feels like it's in place. And so now it's a matter of, uh, you know, making sure that um, I can do this in a way that, um, you know, helps someone else, like some kind of a business partner. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it allows me to, you um, maintain being independent and doing the show on a regular basis but also doing some work for them and making yeah. it all work so we'll uh we'll just mm. i'll just say just stay tuned watch this space exactly and then people need to keep an eye on american, american gumption, gumption. 
Yeah. Um, and he's and you're so going to be back next month here anyway. So we might <laughs> have an, another glimpse of where you are. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's fun. It it really feels like it. Natalie, I don't know about you, um, and I'm not sure what the the vibe in the UK is. I mean, this was a, this has been a funny year, right? So we got kind of uh, yeah. we got kind of turned. You know, the world got turned upside down. Um, the vibe that I'm getting, and I, I don't think that I'm, I think that maybe I'm looking in places that the average person's maybe not looking. Um, I don't see the world ever going back to the way it was. I see still some pretty significant changes forthcoming, and I see um, things ultimately being much better than they are right at the moment. But I also see this massive like disruption still to come that is going to, you know, be um, people don't like change. You know, people like even if we have a system that, you know, isn't necessarily working optimally, people would rather stick with the system than, than to make a change. So I just think behind the scenes, there's lots of energy going that's uh, causing some massive disrupt, uh, disruptions still to come destructions of certain you know um institutions and beliefs that we've had that's going to be the hardest part because you know i think um i think the world is um you know we it's it's a little bit like that matrix right the movie the matrix where you know it's like not everything is the way it is presented and appears and yeah. so things are changing stay tuned i um I agree with you. I agree with you. And um, and I think that you had a guest on your show last week who started to, who, who, who gave some background to that in Kimberly Palm. Mm. And wow. Yeah. Wow. Kimberly, uh, Kimberly and I met, uh, uh, through Victoria Reynolds. Victoria's yes. been a guest multiple yeah. times. Victoria, when I did my drive across the, the US, I And you I met stayed, with her. I met her and, you know, I stayed with her for a few days. Yeah. And uh and and so um you know so I've met all these new wonderful people and they've introduced me to things that even like I mean even like a, a month ago there's things that I've learned that I when I first heard them I'm like oh my gosh this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um and yet, like now, I'm like, well, actually, it's not as crazy as it sounds. Actually, what if it's true? And then, you know, and, and these things are kind of all piling on each other. So imagine a whole year of like, like that first couple of months probably was a little bit like I was, I was fairly fixed in terms of, you know, what I believed. But as uh, this year uh, has gone on, man, since the beginning of this year, it seems like every, every month I'm like a different person just because of the guests that I'm having and the conversations that I'm having and what I'm able to learn on a regular basis. And, uh, a lot of the people who are guests are also coaches and, and they spiritual, are. spiritual yeah. guides. And so even though I'm not, um, directly getting a, um, session with them i mean a lot of it it's like i'm like you know pretending like i'm on the couch getting uh you know getting some learning and self-development yeah absolutely and i'll tell you who's enjoying um who's enjoying our conversation this evening is um a regular um a, a, a regular guest a, a, um, a viewer of ours is tom edge mm. So let's see what Tom has to say. So um, thank you, Tom. Um, it's lovely to see you again and your support. So, so much amazing stuff this evening. Thank you, Natalie and Steve. Describing recovery as a process that unfolds in layers is so right. I made a mistake in the past of trying to work through numerous layers at a time and fell flat on my face with the old behavior still abounding. Absolutely. Love what you said about using your ears to learn sometimes instead of your mouth or brain. So true. And um, this is what we're hoping to do, Tom, is help you. You've helped me this evening. Thank you, both of you. Love you, Tom, and thank you so much. And and I had, uh, I, you know, we've talked about it on a, as I was... Uh, it, as I was a guest here, um, you know, back in the in the fall, I believe we talked about it. But then we, you know, on my show, we talked about uh, I, I've had my own um, 
recovery. Uh, yes. I've been alcohol free for almost five years now, four yes. and a half. And, uh, but I had, um, you know, I had about a 25 year, you know, period where I knew that, you know, it wasn't a healthy, um, it wasn't a healthy habit. And it, ultimately it was an addiction because I tried many times to stop. And, and I was, you know, I, I, it was just like something that just like, it was like, I don't know how to describe it best, but it was kind of like a low level, like background that just kept staying there. And it didn't, it never was so bad that it destroyed my life, but it, it was constantly holding me back. I know for a fact that I had, had I not, um, gone free of of that habit yeah i would not be able to do what i was doing because it was keeping me in fear and it was keeping me playing small and i yeah. and, and it was you know it was feeding the fear that i had more than anything else and i didn't have any freedom because yeah. every day i had to you know um be you know having you know several drinks to to kind of unwind i i i you know convinced myself that it was a reward or a a celebration or a uh drowning my sorrows or you know it was like there was the, uh, all kinds of reasons that it was there and but it was i was physically addicted and i was also emotionally addicted to it yeah. And, yeah. and i know that we had, I had shared this uh on on your show and actually you helped me see this natalie um I emotionally disconnected from it in, in more like in the 2010, 11, 12, when I was going through that. So when my time came in like 2016, when I finally said enough is enough, mm -hmm. um, I, I only had to really go through a, a physical um, yeah. withdrawal, the mm -hmm. emotional withdrawal I had already done. And once I went through the physical withdrawal, I was like completely done with it because I emotionally had kind of cleaned up that, that the need for that. And, yeah. and, and I remember you're saying that, um, you know, in your own case, you, you had to deal with both an emotional and a physical, uh, withdrawal at the exact same time. And you, and, you know, not to put words on your mouth, but, you know, probably many people, um, you know, in recovery, you know, go through those things yeah. at the same time. So I felt like, like, like you helped me see that, oh my gosh, there are two pieces that have to go, you know, for full recovery, you have to emotionally disconnect from it and you have to physically disconnect from it. And um, in, in my case, it was kind of weird in that I had them separated by a couple mm -hmm. of years. And so yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah, because you'd, you'd established yourself knowingly or unknowingly, probably knowingly, you'd established a, um, a foundation of spirituality, which has only grown with time. Right. But you almost... Um, you were almost keeping it suppressed and like you say playing it's playing small mm. by the habit that was the alcohol every day so when yeah. when you made that decision to stop it it was more physical but you had that amazing foundation that you could then just start to um that you could just start to really grow and nurture whereas someone like myself was physically, spiritually, emotionally, everything completely bankrupt and had to start at a really, really low level to be able to, you know, start living life on its terms and, yeah. uh, and, then, and then start to grow. And I was emotionally bankrupt, you know, earlier. So I went through that process. Yeah. And, and, and so I, uh, it wasn't like I didn't have that crash of all of those things being like, missing um but i just somehow went through them like separated and uh you know it was and i didn't even realize it at the time i was doing yeah. that um yeah. but it did i do know that when i finally made the decision to quit um i was just really ready to um where i hadn't been ready to um you know earlier on you know yeah, yeah. 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 And, and then the the one step forward or, or two steps like on the best day of my life I could take two steps forward and one step backward. And and on an average day, I took one step forward and one step back. And then on a not so good day, I took, you know, no step forward and two steps back, yeah. right? So yeah. that was like how I had, so I wasn't, I wasn't like, I was maybe on the aggregate, I was moving forward with my life, but very, 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 very slowly. slowly. Mm. Yeah. 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 Just, just functioning, just but not functioning. thriving. Just, 
just not right. yeah yeah just functioning so yeah absolutely oh <laughs> and uh, it's all very different now because our sobriety dates are very similar um around november it's yours is november isn't it uh december um december. 21st that's it. A couple of days that's before it. Christmas. So that's the one. That's one. And mine's just in November. So we've got a big far, half, a decade coming up this year. So yeah, yeah. one day, one day at a time. Yes, absolutely. Always one day at a time. Right. We are approaching the end oh. of our show. And I, I, I tell you what, every time we chat, Steve, it just flies. We could sit here and talk for hours. <laughs> Well, it's been, you know, it's fun to, it's fun to have these conversations and you've helped me grow and I, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your audience. Um, mm -hmm. and I, and I respect the challenge that everybody has in doing this. This is not easy. Um, like, like I like to think that it's easy. Like, 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 like I've kind of convinced myself that, oh, it wasn't that hard, but I'm like, you know, a couple of years past it at this point. And so, um, it is, it is that hard because it was like 25 years where I was like, man, I gotta, I, you know, this isn't healthy. This isn't helping me. Like I knew, like I knew my, my inner self was telling me that this wasn't the right behavior in the way I, the path that I wanted to be on. And yet, you know, I, you know, the human part of me was like, yeah, but it feels good. <laughs> well, that's it. You know, we're stuck in denial. It's the disease of denial and justification it's not that bad. Hasn't got that bad yet, um, right. but it is, you know. It, and, but it it is possible to get out of that dark place, and uh, and just a glimpse of that light, just a glimpse of that light, and a decision, and life just changes so beautifully. It's just it's incredible, and I'm 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 grateful for every day that I wake up, and um, and I don't have that gnawing anxiety and fear and you know that just takes every ounce of energy to manage yeah it's just you know it's it's just it's just not like that and i've had so many lovely guests um who've been through that in in you know in their lives and they've found recovery and um you know it's beautiful stories like yours you know so many people who've uh, who've done it and continue to do it one day at a time. I think, um, you know, we all want freedom. Um, and we talk about freedom in many different ways. One mm -hmm. way is that, you know, you know, here in the United States, the foundation of our, our country was freedom and, and we've, um, introduced the idea of freedom to the world. And so we've been very fortunate that way. I just grew up in this, right. And, and yet like in the West, people have pers have talked about freedom. And then there's the third world countries that, you know, have, have not been as free. And yeah. yet on an individual level, we can, you know, I didn't never thought about it until I uh, decided that I didn't need to uh, consume alcohol any longer. You know, ultimately that became, you know, my own personal freedom because I wasn't free. I didn't, I thought I was free because I was free to choose whatever I wanted to do at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. yet I wasn't free. I was uh, yeah. living in a, I was living on a hamster wheel at best. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and someone asked me, how would you, you know, one word to wrap up recovery, to describe recovery, what you want, and freedom mm. any day, any day of the week is, uh, is, is that one word. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 and, and my brother was helpful at the time when I, w I remember I was very self-conscious when I, that first year that I was uh, learning to live a new, a new way. And uh, he said to me, he goes, nobody cares what you do. They're all worrying about themselves. And I was all thinking that people were going to judge me uh, if I was choosing to, you know, not, uh, you know, drink. And boy, that talk about like one sentence giving me freedom. It was like, once I, once he said that I, I went, well, let me just, let me actually just pay attention to see if people care. Turns out people don't care. No, 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 no. We're not that special. My ego didn't that. like to hear that. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. The world hasn't stopped to go. Okay. Right. Now here's Steve have stopped drinking. Let's see what happens. 
I love They're so it. busy worrying about themselves. They don't care. I know. <laughs> I know. Awesome. Yeah. Oh. oh, Steve, it's been such a delight talking to you again. And um, I can't wait. Uh, it'll be around about this time next month. All right. We, we'll um, we'll pick up on, we'll think of a good old conversation, maybe some, maybe a nugget from one of your shows that you've mm. done or something that you and I can go, oh, this has happened in my life. How should we, you know, how should we deep dive into that? But, um, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's just wonderful to see you again. And, um, and I just want to remind people where to find you. Um, so every day, well, normally average of four out of five days. Yep, usually about 16 or 17 shows a month on average. Yeah. So um, three three to four shows a week at least, mm -hmm. um, sometimes five. Um, but you, American Gumption Facebook page, that's a great place if you're using uh, Facebook or the YouTube channel, just uh, you know, go to YouTube yeah. and find American Gumption. You'll, there's lots of videos there. And then uh, AmericanGumption.com is my website and that'll um, show you where, where, you know, where you can find me too. So exactly. And, and remind, us of, remind us of the time that your show goes live. Yep. It's, uh, it's from 10 to 11 Eastern time or seven to 8 AM on the West coast, the early morning, and then uh, three o'clock to four o'clock in the UK. That's and I had it. my first um, central Europe uh, guest from, uh, from Sweden uh, uh, last week. And so uh, from four to five in Sweden, I haven't done any Asian uh, or, or, or Australian uh, guests oh. yet. So. <laughs> It'll be well out of sync. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I started doing, Natalie, was I'm, I'm now uh, recording. Yes, you are. Uh, yes. Because I, there were people, it's just not convenient for them to, you know, get on then, but I want them to be a guest. So I'll just record those interviews and then play them the next day at the, um, or, or, you know, or a day or so later in that, you know, uh, so I can just record their interview part and then I could do my monologue live and then play their interview and then wrap up the show. So we'll see how it goes. I, you know what? I watched your show with Kimberly Palm on Friday last week. Perfect. Absolutely that was the first brilliant. time I did it. So you, yeah. did, you, did it seem okay? Flowed across? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flowed Perfect. beautifully. Yeah. So um, keep, yeah, keep that up. Keep that. All right. Because well, you know what it does is it opens the it opens the opportunity to speak to more people because you can work around their times. And I've done that a few times as well when I've had guests who aren't able to make it at a certain time. Is pre-record and then and then you know just play it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, we, well, we um, we're uh, still it still works pretty good for us. Whether you come on my show or I come on your show, Absolutely. we can do it live. So we'll continue to do that. We shall. We shall. <laughs> All righty. So yes, yeah, th thank you so much, uh, Natalie, thank and thank you everybody out there for, exactly. for watching and listening and, exactly. and uh, um, your yeah. support. Appreciate it. All right, brilliant. So stay where you are and I'll see you in the green room. But um, I just want to say God bless to everybody who's been watching and thank you for your support. And um, we shall see you very soon. Bye-bye.